<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to our brand new episode of The Three Whisketeers. I'm Jamie, your host. We have our angel here at Hipster Curtis, and then we also have our laughable, lovable, huggable, happy hunter, and Eddie. Yeah, all that, and more. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our special, special bottle today. So what, you, this is yours. You brought it in. We've been talking about this for a long time. Mm. I'm super excited for it. So I'm excited, too. Holy crap. Bam! <laughs> okay, so we like got a this. bottle of the uh, Double X Project. Oh my God! Is this one of their experimental? Yeah, Double yeah. X we've X. we've tried the others. Yep. So um, I saw this at the store. There was only one bottle, and I was able to grab it real quick. Thank you, Ben's. Thank you, Matt. It's a cool design over here. It's it got a fingerprint. Isn't it? mm -hmm. Yeah. There's some uh, experimental series number two. There's a what? Well, I, I just noticed there's some paper down there. It's a rule book. A rule book. Yeah, a skillfully crafted. Okay. What's this here? Single molds that rewrite the rule book. I guess I'm going to open it, guys. Yep, Don't be mad. I want you to go ahead and crack it open. There. I've been reading a lot of controversy lately online about people saying uh -huh. single molds versus. Blend, which is better and uh, I've always thought it doesn't matter where it came from what's it taste like when it come out of the bottle that's right that's what I agree too yeah a lot of people uh, were no noting that a lot of the blended whiskeys are actually have bourbon in them actually oh. have whiskeys from America in them to when they do the blend and I don't see a problem with that either yeah now if you get a really fantastic single malt and I mean, it is really good. I mean, that's uh, an achievement as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the distiller has really made something really great. But I've had a lot of single malts that weren't all that hot. Yeah. So you know, I yeah, really, I really don't know that you know blending is a bad thing. Okay. No, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Did you find something to read? I found something to read. All okay. Right, go ahead. So, rip ripe summer fruits. Okay. To the nose, classic Glen Fittich fruitness with hints of apple blossom, summer fruits, and ripe pear. A beautiful balance of oak with rich creamy vanilla, barley, barley sugar, excuse me, hint of licorice and subtle spice. Whoa. Taste. A refined and balanced flavor of candy, flo candy floss, sweetness, and rich vanilla oaky oakiness. Deep and mellow, the initial sweetness and complemented, is complemented by unusual notes of toasted almonds, cinnamon, and hints of tannin. Finish long lasting with lingering sweet oakiness. Wow. Okay, it's 47%. So there's a little side note here that talks about, describes the Project X. It says 20 mines, one unexpected whiskey. For the experiment, Brian Kins, uh, Kinsman invited 20 whiskey experts from around the world, giving them the freedom to the where of a warehouse to choose any cask that intrigued them the most. The final 20 malts assured in every from and everything from port pipes to virgin bourbon barrels. And it has created an unusual, innovative, and unexpected whiskey. The unique whiskey is inspired by extraordinary full, small batting. Bating? B-A-T-T-I-N-G. So I guess this is like, like they just a bunch of goofies got together and said, hey, <laughs> let's mix it up with some really fine whiskey. I love it. So to the nose you get apple blossom, uh, summer fruits, ounce of oak and creamy vanilla. I get a little vanilla, barley sugar. I get the vanilla. I got the pear, which I didn't think I was going to catch at all. Yeah. And the apple. I, I have a little hint of cinnamon in there. Mm -hmm. It's very fruity. I mean, it's super fruity. Like this is like super sweet. Uh, a warm kind of a fruit. Yeah. So, hmm. So I wouldn't say like fruity, like a schnapps or anything, but it's just for a whiskey. It's 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 way up there, and I like the color too. Yeah. I mean, it's like a. It's, I don't know. It's like usually they're lighter or they're darker, but this is like somewhere in the middle, and it has. Just I like expected a, it to be darker, yeah. just from the bottle, but yeah, uh, that was threw me off. But boy, it's gorgeous. That is a beautiful bottle just for decoration. Mm -hmm. Um. So this is a single malt, right? You kind of threw me off a little bit. I was thinking that this was a blend. But no, no, just... no, no. No, it is a single malt. Yeah. And this is when they get one right. Okay. Uh, this is exceptional. 
Yeah. Agreed? Yeah. Yeah. This is it's amazing. Okay, a couple episodes. Well, I think it was the first episode. You asked a question, and I was a little bit snide with you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've been thinking about that, and a couple people have actually asked me on the street, what's the proper way to taste whiskey? Yeah, let's talk about that again. Okay, well, I, I've been trying to do some research and talking to some people who I know who mm -hmm. are whiskey drinkers and, and what they think. And I've heard all sorts of stuff. And I sort of think I broke it down to just the basics. Okay. Okay. Put in the glass, just like it was wine. And you look at the color, can be misleading, but you enjoy it. You smell it and you really, really get into the, to, to the nose. Try to break down all the individual characteristics. Now, I talked to a gentleman who smells it from one side of his nose oh. into the other side of his nose, and he gets up. He, he said that he got completely different flavors, completely different ideas. Now, I've tried it myself, and I had a head cold for a couple days, so maybe that's why I haven't actually got any distinction. Okay, so do what now? We can practice that at home later. Yeah, you know, smell from one side of the glass, one side of the glass through diff different nostrils, and, and you, you are supposed to be able to tell different characteristics. Oh my gosh. And then swirl it. And oh. that, that will bring out even more. Kind <laughs> <laughs> of burnt when you do it on one nostril, man. Yeah. Ooh. And then a lot of people suggest that now that you've done that, you take a small amount in your mouth. Yeah. You let it rest on the palate. You let it go underneath oh, yeah. the tongue. Oh. You just let it sit there. And you analyze all the different textures, the tastes, and you slowly swallow. Then at this point, you might say to yourself, hmm, I wonder what that would be with, like with a couple drops of water in it. Because sometimes water will open up a whiskey. Yeah. Now, I don't do that very often, but for the sake of our little learning exercise oh, here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Skull, skull is here. The skull is here. The skull is here. So, let's take it. And see if it actually changes anything. No chickens, maybe just sacrifice one goat. Burn, do you want any water in yours? Mine's already empty. Ah, okay. So good. Dude's like, don't worry about me. I'm slamming it, son. I'm ready. This is very interesting. It does change it. It does. It really did open it up. Now, what's it going to do to the flavor? So on one nostril, I'm thinking it's more pear, and then on the neck, on the other nostril, it's more like oaky. And this has, I don't want to say diluted, but it's like you can distinctly uh, discern the flavors, the taste. Just adding the water, you get yeah, that? Yeah. Really? Is that what you find? I think it, it, on this particular whiskey, I think it did open it up a bit. Mm-hmm. For the, for the to the nose, definitely. Yeah. Well, no, and, and to the palate. Yeah. Yeah. The pear thing is really awesome. I mean, it's like, whoa. I've never, like, I think we had stuff with a little pear before, and I had, mm -hmm. and I tasted it, but this is like, it's like the pear is like the center of it for me. So I'm sure there's a lot more fancy ways and a lot of science behind it, but for me, if I get a new bottle of whiskey, I've always just sat down, Poured myself a little bit, mm -hmm. took the time to smell it, mm -hmm. look at it, mm -hmm. and then taste it. Yeah. I've actually seen uh, Curtis do this. <laughs> yeah, I know you have. Oh, it's so good! He doesn't. And then take him upstairs and he has to have a nap. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, we're, we're not, we're when not I'm going editing the like videos and stuff, I always pour a nice big glass and. Um, oh, so is that why they turn out the way they do? Yeah. Well, that's why they <laughs> shake sometimes. <laughs> uh, but I, I like to keep it warm, yep. and then it sits, and I do it like editing can take the quite a while, shaking. so then as it goes down, um, and I get closer to the end, I'll add a little bit of water. So I try to get the full, like a full experience of the, of the glass. And he turns red because his neck is all red right now. Well, <laughs> you might try, and, and I, I hate to say this, but you might try, start with just an ice cube. Start with an ice cube, and start. then let it get warm? And then... Uh, so, Taste so my thought it, is and then let it warm. Up. Well, yeah, and then let it warm up. Let the ice cube melt. That will add a little bit of water. I'm not talking about a lot of ice. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, there's uh, some uh, glenmorangies that really, really lend themselves really well to this. Mm. And it changes the characteristic through the entire time when it's completely melted and it's warmed up to room temperature, you have a completely different flavor. So from the beginning of the experience to the end. But again, you're putting a, a small piece of ice in there and you're not a huge glob of ice in there. Yeah, you know what? We've had some cask strength stuff and I would think that that would be better to put a cube in there, but I have not seen them actually say you should put a cube in there. And in my mind, since something is that strong, that's when maybe you need to dilute it a little bit. Keep our, keep, keep our ice to a minimum. Keep ice to a minimum. I think you keep ice to a minimum. Uh, or it, for, for, for like that Glenn Morangi I was talking about, it does change it. It does the entire experience, but you, you need an hour mm -hmm. to do it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, I would stay away from ice. Okay. I would use, if you have to have a cold, use whiskey stones. What about snow? What about snow? Mm. Winter's coming. <laughs> All right, on that note, uh, do we have anything else you want to know? Any other? No, I just, uh, I found the pear to be uh, the hit over here, and I, I love it. Yeah, I got some of that fruit and some of that pear and ap apple. Yeah, you, you definitely got some bit. fruit. <laughs> so, um, with you, you this, is, uh, this is highly allocated. Canada, it's hard to find, right? In the state of Iowa, yeah. In the state of Iowa, but if you do happen to find it, buy this. This is so good. I just want to, I'm having a hard time not just slamming it down. I yeah, want to enjoy so it. That's why we like to do this on the show. So on that note, Burn, will you carry us home? All for one. And one, one for, for all. all. <laughs>